Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast with your host, Charles. Enjoy. Hello, and welcome to episode 27 of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Charles, and today we're sitting down with OC Decaf to talk about yoga and meditation. So we're going to be talking about you know how to start meditating, uh, different forms of meditation, and the benefits it can bring. Uh, it can really clear up your mental and give you that trading edge that you're probably looking for. So let's get into it. So if you want to just give us a brief introduction on what you were doing before you found crypto, um, and that kind of introduction into this space. Yeah, absolutely. So you want me to start with my first? Should I introduce myself and then talk about the my introduction into meditation or my introduction into crypto? What do you want me to start with? Um, let's just go with crypto first. Very brief. I mean, everyone I have on pretty much has the same story. It's you know I heard about it from a friend or I read about it on the news. Um, but we, yeah. I okay, kind of cool. just want to, well, yeah, I just kind of want to give people a little intro on who you are, um, so they can kind of get absolutely. a feel for that. So yeah, so I'm OCD Calf. Hello, I. You can find me on Twitter and Discord at OCDcast. I am a part-time crypto trader in training, basically. I trade a little bit. I trade all markets, but I mainly focus on crypto. Um, I've been teaching myself and trading for about a year and a half, two years at this point. I got in. My introduction to it was the mania from the 2017 bull run. So back in 2017, when all you know all the OGs were around, I was definitely still new. But it's funny now in 2019, there's people who joined, you know, in the bear market way after 2017. So now I'm no longer a newcomer, but I still am in like the grand scheme of crypto. But yeah, I've been around for about two years. Uh, bought into the hype. I think I my first purchase was, I think it was Ethereum at 300, and that was. 2000 that was august of 2017 so that was like that was like basically the accumulation before the mania in november december and i bought ethereum at 300 bought bitcoin at whatever it was at that time it was i don't remember i was trading more ETH than i was bitcoin when i first got into it because i was like because you know i didn't know much about it and i was like oh you know bitcoins i was going with like whatever narrative i could find on twitter and it was like ah bitcoin slow for transactions like it's you know at the time there were a lot of people who were talking about like ETH the flipping of ETH and Bitcoin. So I kind of got stuck to that narrative of like, well, Bitcoin's slow and Ethereum has, you know, smart contracts and it can scale and it has sharding and all these other projects. And my opinion has slowly kind of, as I've learned more, I've kind of reverted more into Bitcoin maximalism, but I was definitely uh, ETH when I started. And I bought ETH at 300, um, had made some money on the, like, I, you know, it's a bull market. I made some money, bought some ETH 300, sold it at five, 600, whatever, made some money. I was like, oh, wow, this, you know, great. I'm going to start trading. Right? <laughs> this so, is the easiest yeah. thing ever. <laughs> Everyone's yep, a genius so in the bull market. A in a bull market. Yeah, uh-huh. exactly. What did you say? I was literally said word for word what you said. Everyone's a genius in a bull market. Oh, yeah, okay. That's what I thought. I was like, I couldn't even hear you because you were saying the same words. But yeah, exact exactly. Exact same Everybody words. In the bull market. <laughs> So, um, yeah, bought made some money off of both ETH and um, Bitcoin. I mean, I remember, okay, so I bought some, was kind of just buying. I was basically dollar cost averaging whenever, like, the, like, whenever I thought it was a good place to buy, which at that point then is, you know, that was all wrong. So <laughs> I thought, you know, I'm like, all right, I'm going to buy some here. Like, it's a good place or whatever. Had no risk management at all. Didn't even know what a stop loss was. I mean, I was gambling. I was 100% gambling. And I remember being at my girlfriend's birthday party, um, like, a couple months after, it was in December because her birthday is in December. So it was like right at the mania. Because I remember Bitcoin, like, I remember it, like, I remember the week where Bitcoin hit, like, it was like 9,000, 10,000, 11,000, 12,000, 13. It did all, like, in a week. Like, yeah, like every a... single day, it's another $1,000 candle. Bro. And I was like, this shit is drugs. Like, this <laughs> is crazy. And, like, I remember being, cons- I was consumed by it. Like, I was, I was a mud, like, I was basically how every like gambling day trader was where I'm like basically checking Coinbase, checking my chart. Like I wouldn't even charting at that point. So it was literally just checking prices on my phone. Just Coinbase, refreshing like, your profile. Minutes, like, any, yeah. And like any fluctuation in price basically made my stomach drop. So, you know, that was very stressful. Like checking it at night, like all these kind of, like just not how you should trade at all. So I remember being at my girlfriend's birthday party, like not even paying attention to her fucking party, like checking my phone. And that was like the first one of the first corrections um can't remember if it, it was 
I, I can't remember on the timeline whether it was after the peak or right before the peak. Um, but it like kind of had a flash crash like at one night and I sold so I was like oh my god I remember I remembered like panicking and just selling and I ended up like it was so like I had no idea what I was doing I like so panic sold and I was like oh shit like I'm still in profit like yeah you know, I, I had no idea what I was doing and then continued doing that because you know same I made some more money so I'm like okay I know what I'm doing dude I sniped ETH at the fucking top I bought one I bought 1,307 <laughs> 1,337 so or yeah, Lee either something like that or like it was like one three three eight. Like it was literally like dollars within the top, <laughs> and yup. And then I didn't know what to do because I fucking everything. You know, all Just of a sudden crashed. the market cycle changed, and I'm like, shit, it's gonna get better. And I did what most people do, and I held it to the fucking bottom. And then when it got really fucking nasty, I fucking sold some of it, and I was like, dude, like this is this is dumb. So what I did was is I literally like like i tried to do some trading like some altcoin trading and stuff like off of the kick of making some money off this off the cycle like i remember the first like not the first alt season but the first alt season that i would have witnessed right after the the bitcoin re the correction uh that march of 2018 and i traded some alts there made some money that was fun and cool and then i fucking uh bought into some shills like dude i fucking oh my god i bought a Shield nine shield me something called Snov at like S N O V went like when I first got in and I had no idea what I was doing. I'm making money off of Bitcoin and ETH and I'm like fuck like yeah fuck it let's buy some altcoins and shit. <laughs> and I'm like following you know I don't know anything about traders or anything like this. It's so the knowledge I have now is so different than what I was doing and I'm so glad I like took a moment to be like bro you don't know what you're doing please stop like don't, don't lose don't throw away all your money you're donating and that was what I did. I basically like took a year off of trading and did no live trading, read a ton of books, did paper trading only, ex learned about some other markets. Basically, just like taught, you know, taught myself the shit, the shit I should have learned in the first place. But yeah, so like I, I got brought in, you know, gambled a little bit of money, lost, you know, I made a couple hundred bucks, lost a little over a thousand, you know, fucking realized that, you know, if I don't stop right now, I'm gonna lose a ton of money because. I have no idea what I'm doing and everybody and other people do. So like, you know, I had to be really honest with myself and just practice and paper trade. And then a couple months ago, I started gradually um, upping my size on live accounts and getting back into it consistently and basically just getting comfortable with putting trades on and putting risk out there and just kind of getting psycho. Like I had, you know, like my, I've, you know, got my TA down, got my, got my charts down, all this stuff place, place, you know, stays pretty consistent. I use the same techniques. But, you know, it comes down to training myself psychologically to be putting more size on and, you know, sticking with my plan. So, you know, setting my stop loss, if the trade goes against me, letting it hit my stop loss, not, adjust, you know, not adjusting the stop, you know, having very tight risk management has been my focus over the past couple of months. And it's been a lot of fun. I'm enjoying the shit out of it now. So there's a couple of things you talked about there that, you know, a lot of people that I talked to kind of got caught up in this mania that was late 2017, early 2018, where they had made some money because they had thrown some money at Bitcoin or Ethereum and then it went bananas and they're like, yep. I'm a genius. Like I, yep. I'm going to start trading alts and everyone was shilling. Yep. Everyone and their mother was shilling something. And dude, oh, a God, lot of people that. lost a lot of money. Chill, yeah. It, uh, you know, very costly lessons for a lot of people. Um, but I think you did yep. the right thing and you took a step back um, paper traded for about a year and then yeah, slowly, yeah, slowly eased your way back into the market. And I feel like a lot of people didn't do that and they lost even more money. Um, so very costly lessons. Trying to learned. revenge trade it back. Exactly. Yeah, I know people who like blew multiple accounts. Like, like I know, I know a person who like, uh, like just joined my discord. who was like very intelligent and he's helping me design bots and stuff. And he made a ton of money, like tens of thousands of dollars off of bitcoin like a lot a good portion of money and off of the rally like he bought it like very very low held it for a couple of years now has it and he's just slowly gambling it away into alts in this market and i like i just met him and he's like yeah bro i just throw like i just threw like a bitcoin into so and so alt and i'm like bro please please let me teach you some risk management because there's like literally no reason you should be losing like 30 50 percent of a single bitcoin on a single trade definitely and then you um you kind of briefly touched on, you know, the psychology of trading, which is kind of a segue into our next bit and what I really want to talk about and what I'm really excited to talk about, which is meditation and kind of settling your mind. Um, so for everyone who's listening, can you just give us, you know, 
your in your own words what meditation is and then can you give our listeners some tips on how to meditate properly so as simple as it can be which is all it really needs to be meditation to me is taking whether it be a couple seconds or a couple minutes out of whatever I'm doing and giving my human or monkey mind or whatever you want to call it basically the way the human mind works is that it has to have something to focus on or it just wanders so I basically take a few seconds whether it be a couple deep breaths count to 10 you know one time I'm sitting there looking at a chart or whether I sit down and turn on my headspace app and do it for 10 15 minutes the point of what I'm doing is I'm putting everything down and I'm just counting my breaths I'm counting to one I'm counting to 10 in one out two you know taking my time uh, trying not to get distracted but you will get distracted and when you do you just kind of ease yourself back into it and you begin counting again and the reason this it's it like even after I've done I've been meditating for about two years I was meditating um for about a year well kind of found it about the same time I found crypto but I don't think you like it really does take it took me about eight nine months of like meditating consistently on a daily basis for me for it to kind of click like it was it felt awkward it felt um it's very difficult like the most like I'll, I'll answer your question real quick and then I'll, i don't want to get off on a tangent but yeah so basically it is counting your breaths and taking your time and just kind of disconnecting from whatever's going on the reason this is important for me um and the way that I do that, which is counting the breaths, there's other way to meditate. This is called Vipassana. Um, there's other ways to do it where you can either have a, a chant in your head. Um, my significant other meditates differently than I do. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's giving your mind something to focus on. It helps improve your focus and it helps you disconnect from stuff. So think about the moments where you're angry or you're stressed out and you're constantly just revisiting whatever the fuck is bothering you every you know randomly pop up in your head you'll think about it and then you'll go off on that little thought loop of whatever the fuck is pissing you off and everybody has something oh sorry i'll keep the cursing to minimum don't worry but, about um, it <laughs> everybody has something that bothers them everybody's struggling with something it doesn't matter what it is it's all relative everybody's got something there's positive and negative that we respond to and that's it so it sounds funny but typically the things that are like tormenting your mind if you just leave them alone they will work themselves out i don't really it's just how the human mind works i've just learned this over the past two years like i can spend days trying to figure out a complex like emotional or you know relationship issue or something in my head that i'm just trying to sort out and i can go sit down for 10 15 minutes and then without thinking about it it just comes to you and you're like oh okay Be and i think the reason that is is because when you are in your head, just think about it this way. If you are emotionally, if you are feeling negative, emotionally, like a negatively emotional, if you have any negative emotions, whether you're stressed, uh, angry, sad, any of that kind of stuff, just know that those things affect your decision making. And typically in a negative manner, you typically are more impulsive and make not your best decisions when you're emotional. So, if you find that you're in an instance where someone's making you emotional or whatever, or pissing you off or whatever it might be, it's, I'm telling you from firsthand experience, it's a lot better to just take a deep breath and be like, look, I'm not going to engage with this than it is to scream back at whoever is trying to mess with you. So I've like, I've, I've had multiple altercations over the past couple of weeks of like parents either like verbally or physically assaulting me, whether they be mine or my partners. And I we'll get into that later that's like a story that we can talk about with meditation but um basically you can choose to not engage with that type of energy and so that's like active meditation so like if something's going on actively and you're stressing out in a moment because of something that just occurred focus on your breathing if you get your breathing calm down and if you get that constant and or consistent and you know breathing normally it'll keep you from hyperventilating it'll prevent you from getting angrier it'll help you calm down it'll allow you to make more rational decisions you touched on a lot there um i just kind of want to give a recap for everyone who's listening because yeah, absolutely this is you know a very dense subject matter there's a lot to it it may seem very simple as you know as simple as sitting down and and it's not yeah it's not. I, th there's a lot to it you know the last thing you touched on was 
that your emotions affect your actions, which I think a lot of people already know and can see in their life. But it, it's on a subconscious level as well. If you have something bothering you that you may not even be thinking about, um, like you said, mm-hmm. you can act more sporadically and irrationally. Um, but of course, yeah. yeah, from, from the beginning, um, you know, I asked you what in your words was meditation and how do you do it? You say you sit down, you can take a couple breaths and what you do is you really focus and count your breaths. And for anyone who's tried to meditate, like you said, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. Um, Mm -hmm. in my personal experience, what I do, I do focus on my breath as well. Um, but when I, we talked about this on Bagsy's podcast, I, yeah, you talked about it more of a visual visualization. Exactly. Yeah. Like so an actual counting. Yeah. So when you breathe in, I visualize it as white smoke through the nose and then either red or black smoke coming out. And then you mentioned, you know, the thoughts that you have. Um, I know a big thing for me and a big thing for people who meditate is that you're supposed to, like thoughts will come into your head. It's almost impossible yeah. for you to sit there and just not you're gonna think. think. But you're what, think. yeah, for anyone who's listening, who is like, oh, I, you know, my you thoughts will, are. You will get distracted. Yeah. And my story. Like you will. Uh, that Here's the thing. This is, I'll, I was going to say, try counting to 10, like slowly breathing very shallow, like deep and shallow. It takes about 30 seconds to get there, like to count to 10 when you're meditating. It's not easy to keep focus for about 30 seconds and just focus on whether it's him or where's Charles, where he's talking about, you know, visualizing the breath coming in and out or whether it's me where I'm basically doing the same thing. I'm just visualizing, I'm counting like in my head. And then on the times where I'm really stressed, if I like absolutely like panicking and need to keep my mind from thinking basically about anything because it can't think about anything but that very stressful thing in the very front, um, which again is not everybody's problem. That's like some of the problems that I deal with are specific to having OCD, which is something that I'm diagnosed with. Um, So not everybody will struggle with certain things like that. But like, if you're stressed out about anything, yeah, it's the same thing. Like I visualize sometimes like the actual numbers, whereas you visualize like a flowing of smoke or like your lungs, which is I, I hear a lot of people talking about, like think about, you know, like actual breathing like within your lungs and try to see it. And it just gives you something to think about as opposed to it helps your mind not wander off. Basically exactly. It. And, you know, any anyone who has tried to meditate has experienced that. But what I want to say is that, you know, you should just let those thoughts flow in and out of your head almost like water is what they say you know you're gonna have them but the focus or the the exercises do not dwell or put any extra thought into it have it come in you know get back to your breath and you will notice that it will flow out of your mind and you know after meditating when I sit there and try to you know like what was I thinking about what was going on in my mind I can't recall any of it because it just flows in and out so you know naturally and smoothly but um yeah and can i add something to that? yeah please of course i was gonna say so i didn't know if you had another point but um yeah no that's that's really think about it that way think about like okay you close your you don't even have to close your eyes you can sometimes another way to another trick is focusing on something find something to have a soft gaze on a medium distance away whether it be a small object or you know a corner of something just stare at it it's it's harder to think when you can't move your eyes like try it it's a weird exercise but like if you stare at something and you start thinking your eyes will start wandering it's so if you (laughs) stare at something uh it can it can help you and it also works as like a it works as like a visual aid so like when you're looking at something and you notice that you're no longer like it's funny but it'll take a second before you notice that you're no longer looking at the rock you're staring at and then you're like oh i need to look at that i need to get back to meditating and that's pretty much the way you need to do it is like you're gonna sit there you're gonna count to 10 you're gonna be sitting there you're gonna go one two and then you're like damn like i gotta do so and so tonight i gotta do whatever tonight it's gonna come into your head and then most likely if you're a beginner you're gonna jump from that thought about making dinner or whatever to oh i need to make a grocery list to oh da 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 da. and it you know that's how thoughts chain and the what he what you just touched on is that when you're meditating instead of going oh damn i got distracted like oh this is so hard or whatever you just go i'm not i don't need to be thinking about groceries right now what the only thing I'm focusing on right now is counting my breath. So the, just, you need to go in there with that one goal is that just I am going to sit here and try my best to just count or visualize something and not let my mind wander, but your mind is going to wander. And the goal is to not get beat yourself up about it. Just be like, oh, that's a nice thought. And then one, two, and then go back to it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So again, you mentioned this other thing of sitting and focusing on some sort of object. I just want to say that there are 
plenty of different ways to meditate. I don't want anyone to listen to this and be like, okay, I have to, you know, count my breaths or I need to visualize Absolutely. it with smoke. I need to be looking at something. I need to have my tips. eyes closed. It's a very personalized experience and you need to find what works best for you. Um, 100%. And then, so you, you touched on the fact that you have OCD. Um, so I kind of want to talk about that a little bit and I want to talk about the benefits that you've seen in your life that have come from meditation. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure it has Absolutely. had some effect on your mental with regards to, Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> let's not get too deep into it, but like, I, I do want to, you know, hear some personal experience. And then also, you know, a lot of people, um, they trade, you know, a lot of people that I see on Twitter trade. So, you know, not only in your personal life, but also with regards to trading, can you touch on, you know, some of the benefits you've seen there? Absolutely. Do you mind if I touch on trading first? Because yeah. I think it's a shorter topic. Yeah, please. Or do you want to keep going in this order? No, no. Wh whichever one you want. Okay, cool. So, yeah, we'll start with the trading bit just because I think, think it's a little bit more straightforward than trying to uh, talk about OCD because it can be very, uh, uh, you know, it can be kind of hard to present to people who don't have it. But at the same time, so with with trading, the biggest benefit that I noticed in trading, and I was meditating before I was like actually trading. So I came into it with this edge, whereas a lot of people need to learn this. And most people are impatient. Like I was extremely impatient and ADHD and still am. Um, but I recognize it and I know I have to work on it. And I don't really want to take, you know, Adderall or focused meds or stuff like that. Like, uh, you know, amphetamines. So I try to minimize the amount of stuff I put in my body. So I use meditation to help me focus. And in trading, the benefits that I see uh, mostly are I can have very strong conviction in my trades in the sense that, like, I, I'm i patient and wait for my setups. So, like, I have, you know, like, I have a very, very basic TA style of horizontal lines, trend lines, some fibs, and, you know, and RSI, a couple indicators here and there. And it's like, you know, pretty basic setups and I'm keeping it to a bare bones system because my goal is to try to find trades, take them and practice putting on more trades and taking on more risk. So with meditation, this allows me to not force trades. I there's a, I open the chart all the time where I'm, I open up, especially in the past couple of days with this chop, I open up a Bitcoin chart and I'm like, dude, I just don't want to trade this right now like it's just not my setup like it's i'm not good at it it's it's in the middle of a range it's scam waking everywhere because the liquidity is liquidity is low and it's just it's i don't have all day to sit in front of a screen and you know mess around my stops and it's just this isn't my trading environment so instead of trying to force it like the difference isn't going oh i need to make some money let me force a trade real quick let me you know let me punt along real quick i don't really do that whereas i see a lot of that on twitter of like oh you know i'm not really uh, or I hear people talking about it too, like on Discord and Discord chats. It's like not a lot of conviction, but I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna take this trade, and if it gets stopped out, I get stopped out. Which, like, that's you know, if that's your trading style, that's cool. Like, there's nothing against that. But I am more of a perfectionist, which comes from my OCD. So, like, I wait for my setups um, and then take them, and then get if I if I'm wrong, if it hits my stop, I'm out. If it you know if it works, it goes. And I also really like trading small time frames. A lot of people don't um, because it can be it can psych you out psychologically. If you are not patient and you're not able to sit there and have conviction in your trade and, you know, you're watching it move around and you see a big candle dump or it goes in the opposite direction if you're shorting or whatever the thing, you're more likely to close your trade. That's why a lot of people, you see it all the time on CT, they're like, don't go under the 15 minute. Don't like, don't do any, like, don't mess around on low time frames. Like you'll get psyched out. You'll get, you'll get chopped up. And like, dude, I, I don't really have much problem on the five, three minutes. Like I enjoy it on ETH, Bitcoin. I don't trade it on alts, obviously, but uh, I can scalp some Bitcoin. And I think I'm able to do that because I can sit there and I can, you know, watch it hit my line and I can go, all right, I want in. And then I can just sit there and wait for it to either go against me or hit my target. I'm not going to close the thing in the middle of it unless like, unless like my idea is completely invalidated and I have to reassess, which is a different thing. But yeah, I think it allows you to be patient. I think it allows you to be more selective with your trades. And I think it also helps you respond less emotionally. Also, it helps you with your losers as well, which is like the biggest part of trading that I've heard from most people and myself, including is that like, you're going to lose, you're going to lose like four out of 10 of your trades, most likely, like even great traders are only like 60, 70% profitable. And some of them aren't even that's not even their style. Like they trade, they're only 50% profitable, but they to run bigger R's, you know? So everybody's got a different trading style. And I think 
every single trader can benefit from meditating both just just from the benefits you get in your personal life of reducing anxiety and your you know emotional responses to things as well as also being able to bounce back quicker from losses and stay in your trades and i think that's something that i that's one of the few advantages i have because i'm not a veteran in this space like i'm an amateur i've been like i said i've you know paper trade for about a year just began again over the past couple of months starting to live trade and doing it part-time and uh really getting you know getting everything kind of organized and ready to go and yeah i think that's the number one benefit you get from it is patience and being more selective and being able to bounce back is how that helps me so much it's the most in trading i would say meditation and trading yeah you hit it you hit it pretty spot on there I, i've noticed in my life um i've kind of slowed down you know everything is kind of yeah, just dude. slowed down everything is a little bit more at peace in my opinion yeah and these markets move extremely quickly they're uh they're open 24 hours a day and like you were saying you know a lot of people jump into trades and aren't very patient with their setups and that's where they end up losing money um so yeah pretty much biggest thing for me is that it really does calm your mind and it does teach you that patience um mm -hmm. so that you can find your entry and like you were saying there are people who trade you know lower time frames and they're very sporadic um and that works for some people and i think that you know it kind of sounds like the meditation has helped you you probably knew your trading style beforehand but it has helped you really hone and develop that trading style that really works for you well absolutely and i think i see the way it is for me is that like i think most people who are listening to this and most people who listen to this in the future are probably already traders and are looking to learn meditation whereas i'm one of the few who was meditating consistently and then began trading and i don't really hear many people who have done that which i think is um interesting and i'm curious as to how like because i can't you know I, it's kind of hard for me to see from my perspective like hey here's all the benefits that i have over some over a trader who doesn't meditate whereas i've kind of already always had them you see what i'm saying like, yeah I'm yeah you haven't game. seen that difference from like no meditation trading to then you know picking up meditation and seeing how your trading has changed right i totally and understandable I, the, I was gonna say i say that i think the closest example i have to that is when i was gambling on coinbase in 2017 during the mania and i had no risk management which meditation is my biggest edge but my second biggest edge is definitely risk management that is what i made sure to focus on over the past year and a half because like out of everything i've learned everybody the, the, the consistent theme and everybody i've taught with whether it's been cred non-crypto market teachers anybody it's just that risk management's everything if if you run out of money it doesn't matter you can't trade anymore so if you you know if you limit your how much you lose on your losers you can trade more often and make more money on the trades that you win so i think that helps a lot with like if you are looking to find more peace in meditating and if peace is trading or in trading and if trading is stressful to you focus on meditation and focus on risk management and then focus on ta and indicators and everything else you can possibly learn because that's i'm telling you it's that's for me and for a couple other traders that's like really everything yeah i think you really need to find the peace within yourself first before you can like you mm -hmm. can have all the knowledge in the world but if you jump into a trade and you start freaking out and your anxiety levels are through the roof, you're probably yeah. going to, you know, end up cutting gonna, it early or trade. holding it late. Yeah, you're going to lose that trade. Exactly. You're going you're gonna to lose that trade. Like if you go into a trade and you are stressed out and you're anxious just by putting it on, it's not a trade. You're either size too big, your leverage is too high, your stop's too wide, something. There's a reason you're stressed out about it. Either you're forcing a trade which like dude everybody does i see it all day on my twitter feed everybody does it they're in the it's in the middle of the range they're like ah bitcoin like and bitcoin's got some weird price action i, I chart a lot of markets and bitcoin's got some really weird price action compared to other stuff because of how like infantile the markets are and shit's volatile shit and like you don't get scam wicks in the s p you know what i mean like <laughs> That shit's it's not easy to trade. So yeah, like yeah. if you're if your risk management isn't there and you're not ready for that kind of shit and you can't put on a trade and uh not be stressed out all day or even the you know, however long the duration of the trade is, don't take it. And like if you can't sleep because you have positions on overnight, don't close them before you go to sleep. Don't leave them up overnight. Like don't not sleep because you're you know, stressed out about whether or not your Bitcoin's gonna get stopped out or or get liquidated if you don't have a stop, which like always use a stop 
I, uh, I see some people talking about no stop loss. We're running it to, you know, the moon and it just cracks me up. You know, the risk management some people have on Twitter is just absolutely absurd. Um, but yeah, you it, know, re- it really is. And that's like, the thing is like, it works for some people. Like you can gamble and make money. Like I, there are people who run 50 X hundred X trades and no stop loss and just fucking bank. Like it, it works for them. That's their style. They, they have a sense of risk management that they, it's just a different risk management style. Like I, I follow a really big quant trader who does a, has a telegram group called Joe's crypt. And, uh, he's like constantly updating throughout the day, like his thoughts and on like whatever his positions are, he trades throughout the day as a day trader. And this man runs no stops, like high leverage, like lots of Bitcoin. So he trades a single Bitcoin every trade. Like it, like when he, uh, changes his position he's using single bitcoin so he's running like 13 at a time no stop loss with leverage and the dude's killing it and it's it doesn't make any sense to me but like you know everybody that's what i love about trading is that the same thing with meditation everybody can do it a completely different way and it can work you just you got to find what works for you and you got to be at peace and not stressed out while it's going on basically there we go yeah so we, we touched on how it has been beneficial to your trading life um can you brief just briefly um, mm-hmm. touch on you know how it has had a benefit you've you've mentioned a ton of benefits already but um, you have OCD can you mention some of the benefits that you've seen um, that meditation has brought yeah absolutely so real briefly my what OCD is to me um, just because there's a lot of misconceptions about obsessive compulsive disorder so I actually have obsessed like diagnosed moderate obsessive moderate to severe that's what they call it but I'll call it moderate because it's you know I know there are people who have it worse. So moderate obsessive compulsive disorder, basically it just means it's an anxiety disorder and the way it works for me is that I can't stop thinking ever. I'm unable to stop thinking. I just can't do it. The only way I can is to meditate. And even then it's still pretty hard. Like it is for everybody, but like it's better than if I'm not doing it. So I have overall like overall it's reduced my just like thoughts for a minute like just the amount that i think because most like sounds pretty foolish um but i've realized that after the past two years of meditating and like i now think less and talk less like i used to like not really be able to shut up and i was kind of like always the you know trying to be like the center of attention and i don't really feel that way anymore i don't really i don't need to draw attention to myself i just kind of give my input when i feel like you know i can be beneficial um but yeah so since meditating i think less overall um ocd is an anxiety disorder so at the point when i first found it when i first learned about meditation which i actually um found out about meditation through psychedelics through lsd specifically which we can touch on later if you're interested oh i'm um i'm, I'm big on lsd just, so <laughs> we can get into yeah. that yeah i'm yeah, a absolutely. B- big so, proponent Dude, at, yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, we'll definitely get into a, a, a good talk about that. But yeah, so the my main symptoms for OCD are the inability to stop thinking, uh, looping thoughts where basically I can get stuck on a thought and I can't get out of it. It does. It, it sounds ridiculous, but like think of OCD as like you have like a you have like a like a window on your screen, like this Discord window I'm having right now, and you just can't close it, and it's always at the forefront of your screen. So no matter when I try to access my mind, that thought will be right there in front, like basically like heckling and like trying, it's, 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 it's very hard to describe, but you get stuck in these thought loops. You think a lot, I perform these rituals and stuff. Like when I touch items, I basically, it sounds so fucking insane, but this is literally how my mind works. Like I'll walk, you know, it's like stepping on a crack. That's not really one of my things. Finds like doorknobs, it's very specific things, but like I can like touch a doorknob incorrectly and my mind will be like, yo, if you don't fucking, touch that doorknob correctly again like your sister's gonna fucking die and i'll be like whoa look i don't want to i don't want that to happen and there's no reason for me to not prevent that so let me let me go ahead and do that and it gets in it puts you and this is something that a lot of people with ocd share um is that basically your mind does this bargaining thing where it will it kind of torments you and it like if you do things that feel wrong um like an like that internal gut feeling it can basically play games with your head and it can make you like redo it over and over again trying to prevent things that never would normally happen but in the moment you're like 
here's the thought process. You're like, oh, you touch this doorknob. Okay, my for some reason my mind or consciousness or whatever is telling me that like if I don't, you know, correct this feeling that I just create for, created, that something bad's gonna happen. And in when you're in that moment, you're like, well, the risk of like, you know, I might as well just do touch the doorknob because like, what if I don't do it? And it actually happens and like my sister dies and like it's my fault like that's how it works and it's very it's fucking it's stupid it's dumb i hate it but that's just how my mind works it works by default like that so i started meditating about two years ago because i my girlfriend who i just met at that time like took me on like a guided trip which i'd done it a bunch of times before and i had just realized like i was on the trip and for some reason the words came to my head the insight of I cause all of my own problems and it flipped the perspective on my reality and my responsibility and it gave all of the responsibility to me and the way to be able to I don't know somehow in that moment I also learned how to be able to just calm my mind in general which is meditating and if I if I can just take those 10 minutes or so out of the day and focus on my breath or you know not allow my mind to just wander it overall calms down my anxiety, the amount that I think, the amount that I interact with these rituals, just basically any OCD symptom that I have, which is all just different anxiety disorders, they just minimize, they just go down. Like my OCD, now, like I am at the best place of my life I've ever been at mentally. I've struggled with severe mental like issues, like just nonstop struggling for my entire life. And then I fucking basically hit the bottom, lost it, got really lucky that I made it out and somehow learned meditation and did it consistently. And I don't know, now we're here and some of those, the OCD, OCD symptoms that I just, just described to you are drastically decreased. And dude, overall, like I just don't get stressed out anymore. I'm not like, I mean, like if I'm constantly exposed to stress, like I'm currently here visiting family right now, they're, my parents aren't in a great place. So, you know, they're constantly, you know, exuding stress. So, you know, I keep to myself and interact with it when I'm able to, but dude, the amount that I get stressed now is minimal. It's, 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 it's negligible. And it, you, and it's funny because I find now that I'm at peace with myself and I know myself and everything on my end is okay. Like I know I have things to work on, but I accept everything and I'm at peace. Like I'm comfortable. And I find now that all of the stress that is finding me that I am feeling is coming from other people. So I'm kind of like systematically addressing that about because it's like family and friends and stuff. Well, not really friends, like all my friends, I pretty you know, I don't really keep people around who bring neg negativity, but it, for most people, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this. It's very hard to cut out negativity when it's your family. So, yeah, I just I don't know. Meditation has overall drastically improved everything. Like it's the easiest way to level up in this simulation, in my opinion. I completely agree. Um, you know, we got into that kind of little talk right there because you were talking about your OCD um, and you described it as an anxiety disorder and you talked about, you know, little things that you need to do, like touching a doorknob. And I, I can't say that, you know, a lot or a majority of the people listening to this podcast ha are going through or dealing with the same stuff, but it, you know, you continued on to talk about how you know, it has really just calmed your mind. Um, it has changed your perspective on life. You talked about the fact that a lot or almost all of your problems are internalized and caused by the way you react to them. And I completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your mind kind of creates the reality that you live in. Um, and you have the ability to change your reality at a whim, I want to say. Um, and if there's stuff that's stressing you out, you know, that you kind of think is external, you can use meditation and I can use meditation to change my perspective and not allow myself to get stressed out based on external factors. Exactly. Um, See, that is the number one thing I think I learned throughout my entire journey so far and that I'm happy to communicate to anybody is that you understand that everybody has energy. Eventually, when you meditate more and you find if you're not already in tune with whatever your spiritual side is, and I'm not talking, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, whatever, I'm talking voodoo or whatever. I'm talking about like just being connected with the universe and yourself because you and the universe and the earth are all the same thing. We are all atoms and we are all, everything's the same thing. Plants, animals, 
you are that we are all the same so it's a it's like a combined consciousness thing so what i realized is that basically everybody has energy and some people have very positive energy and some people unfortunately don't like them like have negative energy because a lot of people that i come in contact with whether it be family or just people in general are very upset because they don't like themselves and i'm not saying that to like be mean or anything i just mean like people are generally upset because like just with like because like what i'm talking about here like if henry if charles says something to me right now if he says some insulting ass shit i can choose whether or not to get offended by it i don't think most people realize that like you could say anything you want to me right now trying to like completely destroy my person if you wanted and like yeah it's gonna bother me but like I have the choice on whether or not I want to try to tear you down or if I want to go, you know what, I'm not interested in your negativity. I'm going to block you and never talk to you again because you're not bringing, you're not beneficial to me. What are you, you're just trying, like, same thing I do on Twitter. Like, when anybody says, like, some outrageous shit on Twitter or whatever, just block them. Like, I don't, I don't have time to communicate with you. Like, so you can, you can choose how your body responds and you can also choose whether or not to be around negative energy. And it's, it's like that old adage, like, you are who you hang out with. Like, if your friends are all negative and they're all complaining and everybody's miserable, you will be too. End of story. Or it's or you're not going to be and it's going to weigh on you and you're going to want new friends. Completely agree. Yeah, so you, you talked about this kind of spirituality of meditation and uh, I, I, this whole vibrational thing uh, has kind of been twisted and altered and you hear a lot of people talking about, oh, good vibes, bad vibes. And yeah, it yeah, kind of yeah, gets yeah. dismissed, but I think, you know, you're spot on there with the way that the universe works. But... That's, you know, it's a really good segue into my next question, which is, you know, meditation is seen as this very spiritual thing um, with a lot of religions. It's used to get to enlightenment. Um, but this episode's focusing on, you know, how meditation can help you. Pract the practicality of it, I think. Yeah. It, it, and it's, you know, we're I'm trying to relate it to how it can make you a better trader. Um, do you, yeah. can you agree with that? Or do you think this should be this purely spiritual thing? Do you think there's something wrong with using it for any kind of monetary gain? Dude, not at all. And I wouldn't say, okay, I see what you're saying, but I would say that's probably a jump because like in this, if you're talking about trading specifically, yeah, you could, you know, you're using meditation as a way to benefit, you know, your profits, which would be monetary gain. But I don't think, I, I think that's, there's no need to say that. I, I think you gain so much from it just by doing it that like, you know, it's also a benefit that you are now patient and you're trading and you will make more money because of that, as opposed to, you know, I'm monetarily gaining from meditating. I see what you're, what you're saying. No, no. I mean, I, 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 I completely agree with you. I want to say that I think it's more of an after effect, kind of a second, secondary, you know, benefit, but I just wanted to get your opinion on it. Um, because I don't want, I don't really want people to be like, okay, I'm going to listen to this episode to learn how to meditate, to make more money. Cause I, yeah, I personally right. don't and, think it right. should be used that way. No, I agree. And that's – I would honestly be surprised if that was the way that anybody really came into this. Um, and so to go back to your question, uh, it really is however you want to make it. If you want to have a spiritual connection with the universe and with God or whatever you want to call it, which like, like you know, everybody has their own way of trying to – come up with answers for why the universe is here and what the fuck's going on so whether you know whatever you call it whether it's god the universe vibrations whatever it's just meditation can be very very spiritual you can have very intense spiritual and psychedelic um i don't want to say effects but like i don't know experiences and visions and stuff while you're doing it and you get to a point where you can um do it at two, like you have to kind of get to a certain point where you start experiencing that you have to get over the hump of basically getting comfortable with it at first but it doesn't have to be spiritual no i think it's practical look at it like a breathing exercise look at it like a regular exercise that you would do in the gym in the same way that yoga yoga is meditation if you do yoga already congrats you meditate that's it's pretty much that yoga is just a the physical version of meditating it's stretching and while you're stretching you're trying to be present and focus on like you visualize the parts of your body that you're feeling the stretch in and you visualize like your body you know loosening up and all those things and that is the same thing as that we do when we meditate you're taking deep breaths and your your mind is currently focused on 
the part of your body that you're feeling. Whereas in meditation, you're focused on your either your breath specifically or counting the numbers or a focal point or something. So I think it's both. I think it's whatever you want it to be. I think it's, you know, I wake up in the first morning and I don't, like half the time I meditate, I don't even want to do it at first. Like, I don't know if you can relate to this, but like I have to kind of force myself to meditate even doing it after like two years. Like I still, I'm so, my body still has such a like response to it where it's like, it's it is hard to shut your mind off and shut it down if especially if i'm like sitting here on my computer and i'm doing like 18 different things at once and i just go okay i'm getting a little flustered let's let's take a deep breath or something it's i don't care who I, it might not be hard for everybody but it's hard for me to be go okay let's not look at our screen for a second and let's just trying to disconnect quickly or you know doing that kind of stuff but i think it's very practical in the sense that it's a breathing exercise but you can also do like long sessions and like add some cannabis or like you know once you get really experienced with it adding something like lsd or mushrooms or something on top of meditating and bro you're golden so it really is whatever you want it to be but i think on the base level just look at it as a breathing exercise if you get a spiritual connection with the universe or god or whatever fantastic but at the root of it it is an exercise to help you focus and to help you to keep you out of your head basically in the simplest of terms there we go yeah you, t you talked about a couple things that i actually wanted to you know touch on there which was one you spoke about yoga um and uh, i was practicing yoga for you know multiple years before i actually just did the sit down breathing breathing exercise type of meditation awesome. so for anyone who might be having a little bit of trouble you know just sitting down focusing go do some yoga take a class it is extremely beneficial and then you know i think you'll find it much easier to then just sit down and meditate and then yeah, you know i think yoga is an i think yoga is an excellent segue into meditation exactly yes 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 and then again it's easier in my opinion you you talked about you know different ways to meditate different benefits that you can gain from it and i just want to stress this you know you, i can't stress it enough that this is a personal experience you know you, we you're listening to two people talk right now we are two completely different people we have two different ways of meditating we have two different you know goals and benefits from meditating and so i don't want different you to minds, different lives exactly yeah i don't variables i don't I, even know this kid i just met him exactly so yeah i don't i don't want anyone listening to be like okay this is the experience i need to have or you know this is how i need to meditate you find what works for you um because it really just depends on what you're going through in your life how you think how you act um so make sure that you personalize it and do what feels right for you um and there's no wrong way to do it exactly don't yes. be hard like that's that's if you can take anything away from this conversation because i've heard you stress that a couple times just don't fucking take life seriously like it's really not like it's 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 all gonna work out like and when you and like it that sounds like pretty dumb but like when you meditate and you take deep breaths like bad shit's gonna come and go like life is gonna be stressful but for like i don't know just when you do this it may it, it allows you to take it in strides like things happen and you're just like great here's this unfortunate thing i have to deal with now as opposed to panicking which i used to do like i've been there so i've, I've been on i've been on completely opposite sides of the spectrum i'm now considered very healthy and more so than most of the people that i know mentally like just you know stability wise whereas i used to be beyond repair compared to most people so yeah there's this is all these are all tips like don't take meditation too seriously don't get worked up about it i i i've probably told a hundred people to meditate when people were like what's your secret what do you do like and this comes up all the time like people ask me about it when they're either whether they're like yo why are you like why are you so calm or like why is this not bothering you or like yeah it comes up like people ask and i end up talking about it all the time because it's the most beneficial thing i've ever done in my life out of everything and just don't take it seriously. It's going to be hard. You're going to go on Headspace, download the free app, do the three-minute or one-minute meditation. Literally st start from nothing and build up. Don't try to do a 10-minute meditation. Use use our exact tips. Try a little bit of everything. You know, Try to stare on something. If that's hard, try to count your breaths. If that's not for you, try to visualize your breaths. If that's not for you, make something up. You will figure it out. Just know that it's beneficial. Like, And we're telling you this because we do it you know, I even do it against my, I don't even want to do it. Like I, I, my body itself is still, still doesn't want to sit down and do it. It's still very hard for someone who's ADHD beyond belief. And 
but the second I'm done, I'm like, wow, I should do that every hour. Seriously, I do it every time I meditate. I'm like, I, I like gotta force myself to do it, and then I do it, and I'm like, greatest thing ever. Can't yeah. wait to do it again. And then typically I'll do it the first time in the day, and then I'll be like, good, and then I'll do another one at night if I get one in in the morning. There we go. Yeah, I mean, so, so a lot of people listening, they probably don't meditate, but they probably experience that same exact thing with you know going to the gym, going on a run, doing any kind of exercise. Anything. Yeah, you know, anything that's hard. Yeah, that's exactly. Our bodies are naturally designed to like, you know, you don't that it's hard to go to the gym. It's hard to do your job. It's hard to do the things that your body responds to negatively. Don't always equate to something that's bad it's just your body's not used to it and it doesn't want to be pushed just like your mind doesn't want to stop running and like i i don't know my mind it's like i'm a smart dude but like my mind needed to be restructured like it was it was not like think about it like i think about my mind as, as like a computer that's just how like the analogy works for me and like you just like think about like if you're not meditating and you're kind of all over the place and you got a hundred tabs open on your computer and like i know we all like to think that that's productive but it's not i do it every day multitasking is not productive i <laughs> so it's the difference if you meditate you know you think about it if you're visual if trying to give you a visualization is that like you close all the tabs and you're like okay let's calm let's take a deep breath what is the one task i can focus on right now and you open that one tab and you do whatever that is and that shit's not easy either that's why we multitask because we don't want to sit there i've been avoiding doing this fast application for weeks because i don't want to sit down and do it but as soon as i do it i'll be like oh wow thank god that's done <laughs> right on yeah and i gotta go back to school so <laughs> there we go and you're not gonna want to go to your classes but you'll go and again yeah, no, you'll see i don't want to in hindsight yeah. that you know it's super beneficial so you know you actually touched on what i usually like to ask all my guests which is you know how, how how to start pretty much and you talked about the headspace app i you know segued into meditation from yoga um mm -hmm. so oh, great oh, yeah great. you awesome. know for anyone who's listening i check out the headspace app it's you can do the one minute three minute meditation but yeah, do you have incredible. do you I'm have anything else that you know as Dude, someone okay. who's just starting can you give them you know one big overarching chip tip on how to kind of do this successfully I'm absolutely and it is don't be too hard on yourself like just know I, I i know there's no way to really know like do your research figure out why like it's hard to understand what you can gain from meditating um before you do it because you don't know what the what you gain from it so i that's why like i don't want to just i hate normally just telling people like hey do this because i said so but like I, you have two people here who actually do it and have gone through the whole trying to get acclimated to it and trying to make it a habit and that's the hardest part of it is like seriously like the I, it took me about eight months of doing it every day to every other day to really like not feel awkward about it and to not you know be too hard on myself about it and to find a way I didn't like and the, the big change for me was that when I first sat down, I didn't have any input and I or any advice or anything, and it was just like, okay, let's sit here and not think. And I did that for a couple months, and it drove me nuts. So, like I said, that might work for you. Your mind might not be as chaotic as mine is or other people's. But I watched a video of this monk who was like, yeah, here's why we focus – like we do visualizations of our breath and we focus on numbers, and that's because like you have this monkey mind. Like I can like – I can – we can put the video in the show notes or something, but like it's yeah, it's this monk. Just to look it up called like Monkey Mind on YouTube, and it's like this guy who's like, we have to give the mind something to focus on, or else it just runs off. And he has like a you know he's like a monk his whole life, and he has a much more concise way of explaining it. But basically, just know that out of everything I've ever done in my life, and I'm not old, I'm in my twenties, but like out of everything I've done, meditation has been the most beneficial. Um, it is, it's, and it's really not that hard like it is hard like it is getting into it but like it think about it in the long run like, compared to other things that you can do that are beneficial for you like it's just sitting down for five minutes and breathing and like yes it's it's very hard especially if you have adhd but don't beat yourself up about it just think about it as a game count start at one and count to ten you're you're probably not going to get to ten the first couple of times i promise and you're going to just laugh at yourself about it learn to laugh at yourself that's that it, learn to laugh at everything that's how i basically get through life life is hard dude 
I there's nonstop chaos. But like, why do I need to be stressed out too if everybody else is stressed out? I don't want to be stressed out. Like if if you don't want to be stressed out, don't be stressed out. Learn to be happy, and you can do that through meditating. You can analyze the way that you're feeling, and you can get a good idea of why you're feeling that way. And I had to meditate for about two years before I realized, hey, I'm not really the per I'm not the one who's stressing me out. It's my family, and I've had because of that I've had to set some pretty strong boundaries with them. So. Yeah, just know that it's helpful. Know that it's hard. Don't beat yourself up about it. Laugh. Learn to laugh at yourself. Um, and I promise, within a couple weeks or so, you, I, you, you're just gonna feel a general, like, a, a, a shift, slightly more right? sense of peace. Huh? I was saying like a general shift in you know. Just like a general, life. yeah, like a general right. solace. Like you're gonna feel calmer. Like. If I like, I'm feeling away right now. Like you know, you have that chest tension that you do when there's anxiety and stuff. And like you know, I'm sitting right here. Like I'm a little nervous from doing this. It's my first podcast ever. I mean, I'm I'm chilling, but at the same time, everything makes you feel the way it does, regardless if you know you want it to or whatever. It's just how the human body responds the way the the way the mind stigmas work. And like I was nervous to come on here, and I have a little bit like you know like five percent anxiety out of my whole body from doing this and i you know once i'm done this i can go take a three minute meditation and that anxiety will be gone in the same way that if you have an angry moment with your partner or your family members just take try take just try it for once take a deep breath walk away readdress it when the other person is calm do not escalate it you nothing good will come from it i promise and you know that so try doing it you know on your own get the headspace app get calm get anything literally go on your phone swipe down Go to the app store, download one of the free apps. Just try it. Try it for a month. I pay to do the paid version because I like doing all the packs and stuff. And I it's like a gym membership for your brain, basically. Like it's like ten bucks, thirteen bucks a month or something like that. And it's the best thing I could, it's the best thing I've ever bought. So, you know, it's all about perspective. But don't beat yourself up. Learn to laugh about it. Definitely give it a try. Um, and I guarantee you'll see some benefits both in your general life and your trading. Yeah, so there's a number of apps like you were saying. I have personally tried Headspace. Um, so hit the App Store. Um, and yeah, you, you kind of touched on something that, you know, my kind of biggest tip would be is that it is a slow process. Um, you're not going to sit down day one and, you know, so reach in right. Yeah, be exactly. Um, but it's, you know, five minutes a day to 30 minutes a day, depending on how long you want to meditate for. And like you were saying, the benefits greatly out outweigh the little bit of time put into it and i think a lot of people that are listening are very mm -hmm. forward thinking and can you know delay gratification because you're not going to see any like big changes or like very quick changes um so just start slow they say it takes yeah, 20 a, they say it yeah, takes... it's a crypto trading podcast like think of it as an investment yeah exactly like, you're not exactly. gonna get yeah it's a swing it's a swing trade like you're not gonna get that investment on that med that five three Two minute, two minute meditation session that you did after this podcast. But I recommend everybody who listens to this just download an app, do it for thirty seconds or a minute. Literally, like I don't care. Do it is if you can only count to three, that's fine. But that will also tell you you're like, hey, I yo maybe I can improve my mind's focus and maybe I do get distracted a little bit easier and it'll help you analyze those things. And there's this favorite quote that I've had that I've learned through meditation, and I say it all the time, is that like any time, like, like I'm trying to get my mom to meditate. She's having a rough time. I want, I want her to be better, and she will not try meditation. She says she can't because it's too hard, and that's pretty much the response that I always get from people is that it's too difficult. They're too ADHD. They're going to go crazy, all that kind of stuff. The person who – this is the quote – but the person who can't find time to meditate throughout the day needs it the most. Because it means that you're not using your time efficiently or the time that you do have available, you're distracted or distracting yourself. Because everybody, ha everybody has five minutes in their day. If you do not have five minutes in your day, like you need to adjust that. Reassess, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, there's definitely a problem that is that it's not normal. Yeah. But like, and that's the thing is people say they don't have time, but like do it when you're in the bathroom, do it when you're driving, do it when you're listening to a podcast. Think about all the time you spend on social media. All of that time could be spent not on social media or meditating or some of it spent towards meditating. So yes, just know it's going to be hard. Know it's going to take some time. It's an investment, but I just trust me. I don't know. You don't know me or maybe you probably know Charles better than me, but 
it's the it's the best shit ever. No, you're 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 so spot on with it, and you know it takes 21 days to make or break a habit. So give it one month. Nope. You know, if you don't see even the tiniest bit of change, maybe meditation's not for you. It really isn't for everybody, but you know, it might not be. Yeah, start slow and give it one month. Is my you know biggest overarching i would i would be curious to see like i would say it might not be for everybody but i also think that that could just be like another one of the excuses like oh it's too hard for me because i feel like every it's it's like i feel like that's saying like exercise isn't for everybody which like it isn't you know if you're you're realistically speaking but like yeah everybody should exercise in the same sense that like you should I I personally think every single person can benefit from meditating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I do too. Um, I just I think yeah, you got to be conservative. Yeah, I think some people you know may not see the benefits as much as others, um, which is why mm-hmm. I'm still meditating because I see some great benefits from it, and it's why other people get into meditating and then you know fall off and drop off and stop doing it. Um, so that's why that's what I kind of mean by it's not for everybody. Um, and they find other ways to kind of calm their mind and cope with the stresses of life. But I, you know, we covered so much. I really appreciate you coming on and taking the time today. Uh, you said you were a little nervous to come on and I couldn't hear it at all. That was wonderful. <laughs> so I, I really appreciate you coming I mean, on. Yeah. First podcast. Yeah. This, no, this you, is a, this is a pleasure. I really wonderful. hope to be doing this more often. Yeah, no, I really enjoy this. This is a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course, man. And you know, we have, we'll have your Twitter uh, your Discord handle in the notes. Uh, so if anyone wants to, you know, hit up OCDcaf and shoot the shit about life or talk about, you know, tips on meditating, I'm sure he'd be more than willing. So we'll have Absolutely. that. Yeah. Talk to me about anything. There Seriously, we go. DMs are open on Twitter, Discord. I have my own. Like, if I can do a quick plug real quick. Yeah, I have please my own plug Discord all your shit. Channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, plug it all. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, got the got the Twitter, got the Discord. That's really all I have. It's just it's just those two things. Um, and then I have my own Discord channel which I can send him the invite link so he can put it in the show notes and stuff. But it is a trading-based um, Discord channel that is – I can't recommend it over anybody else's, like, you know, like Space Peso or, you know, Cryptopolis or, or Bagsy. There's some really good, uh, you know, things that you should definitely join for trading. But mine is uh, more of like a – it has a little bit of everything. So, like, I'm in here trading every day. I have a couple friends who are in here trading every day. We post all of our charts. I got live feeds for news and everything. I have – the big difference between my channel and everybody else's channel is that it's music focused. So I love music. I'm a musician myself. I make music. I rap. I make beats. I DJ. I my my girlfriend's a singer songwriter. I have a studio. I love music. So I have a crate section in my Discord where I implore everybody to please, please, please take your music and link it in the appropriate crate. So there's every genre in there. Go put your music in there. And this is seriously, this is so much fun because. I love finding new music and people I found so much good music from people in CT who have joined this this Discord channel. So if you want to share some music, you want to talk about gaming, meditation, any of that stuff, feel free to join. If you don't feel like joining my channel, you're welcome to hit me up either on Twitter at OCDcaf or Discord at OCDcaf. And dude, ask me about meditation, ask me about trading. We can play Apex Legends. I don't care. Just just holler at me. I'm down to talk at any time. So just another Thanks another so much friend online. I, I really appreciate you opening up like that and allowing people to reach out if they need it. So we'll have again we'll have all that in the description. Um, and again, thank you so much for coming on. This is this one you know hits home for me because I I've seen the benefits of meditation. So I'm glad someone was able to Dude. come on and share. All right, guys, that wraps up another episode. And I just want to take a quick second to ask you a huge favor. If you found anything in the episode helpful or it's been inspiring to you in any way, I just ask that you share it with your friends, family, anyone you know on social media, um, and hopefully we can help them out as well. Have a good one.